Listen, vamos. sure you can hear me and hello to all of our friends uh, that are watching online uh, right now I'll give you all a shout out here in a little bit but be sure to say hello in the chat and let us know where you are watching from uh, this morning we are so happy that you're here at Peace Tree if you're new to Peace Tree we do welcome you I uh, hope that you'll follow us online and uh, look for opportunities to continue to connect with us uh, in the future I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, invite up uh, our guest musician who's uh, gonna be leading us in worship this morning uh, mr. Josh uh, Threlkeld, as he's making his way and uh, and uh, putting the guitar on, uh, I, we'll warm up our voices this morning uh, with a little vocal exercise. It is uh, someone's birthday uh, today in here, and she didn't think I would know it, but it is it's Miss uh, Gracie Lowrance's birthday, uh, and so I'm not going to ask what number birthday it is. Uh, and I know we've got Cleve's birthdays coming up on Tuesday, uh, but I feel like I mentioned to, to Cleve and, and Jimbo had a birthday a couple Fridays ago. Uh, um, we, we typically embarrass the person that has a birthday on the Sunday that they're here at church. So, uh, so Gracie, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. And folks, if we can, let's, uh, let's go ahead and warm up our voices this morning by singing happy birthday to Gracie on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gracie. wonderful day with Gabe and with your daughter Lucy and we're so happy that you're spending your birthday in worship with us this morning uh, and friends we have Josh Threlkeld with us he's going to lead us in, uh, in singing our first song this morning we're going to invite you to stand and join your voices together we do have an infant baptism that uh, is going to be taking place here uh, very soon uh, and so this uh, will get us in the spirit and in the mood for, uh, for a baptism so let's go ahead and uh, stand and join our voices together now
Well, good morning once again. I am Chris Roof, the lead pastor here at Peachtree. I'd like to welcome you here as uh, we celebrate a, a, a Super Bowl Sunday uh, with the Super Bowl of Caring. Uh, we are so glad that you're with us in person uh, and online. If you're worshiping on Facebook Live, be sure to like this video and say hello in the chat and let us know where you are joining us from this morning. We'd like for everybody to take out your phone, speaking of Facebook, and, uh, and check in this morning. Thanks to our partnership with a different charity each month, we're able to make a donation for each Facebook check-in at Peachtree and each review of our church. And thanks to your check-in so far uh, this month, we've donated 19 pairs of shoes to children in need. We'll tell you more about the nonprofit we're partnering with. Uh, we partnered with them in January and, and again for this month. So if you'd like to check in, all you have to do is open up the Facebook app on your phone, click on the phrase at the top of the screen that says, what's on your mind? And then choose check-in. Type Peachtree UMC in the search bar and then you can update your status with a picture or by tagging friends uh, that you are sitting on the, your row with before you post that to Facebook. And so from the month of February, we're once again supporting the nonprofit organization Souls for Souls, and they're based out of Nashville. And Souls for Souls, they turn shoes and clothing into educational and economic opportunities. Their programs aim to make a positive difference on the planet and in people's economic, educational, and physical well-being. Didn't I already say that? But you know what? It's since 2006, we have, they have donated 83 million pairs of shoes and pieces of clothing uh, to help create opportunities for people across 129 different countries. So every check-in and review at Peachtree this month will support our charitable efforts with Souls for Souls. And be sure to use the hashtag, give shoes, give love, so that others can click on that and then they can learn more about this month's nonprofit partner and see all the folks that have been checking in here at Peachtree. And we thank you for checking in this morning. I want to thank everybody who brought canned goods and other non-perishables for our Soup Herbal of Caring Food Drive. You can still make a gift to the Capable Community Food Pantry by visiting peacetree.church slash give, and you can pick Food Pantry from the drop-down menu on that screen. Uh, you have another opportunity to positively impact our community next week. So we, we, we did food and, and hunger and addressing those needs this week. Well, next week, we're going to have our Health and Wellness Sunday. We'll be joined in worship by the Reverend Dr. Jonathan Lewis from Methodist Healthcare. Uh, we're going to hear about the work that the Methodist Auxiliary have been doing to support families in Memphis. And the Vitalant Power Bus is going to be parked in front of the West Entrance. Uh, that is closest to our nursery and our children's area in the Fellowship Hall. They're going to be parked out there from 8.30 to 11.30 next Sunday. You can sign up now for a time slot to donate blood by visiting our website, peacetree.church, and then clicking on the health and wellness box on the home page. Because did you know that every two seconds, someone in our country requires blood and or platelets, but only 3% of the eligible uh, don donation population, donor population actually gives blood. So every two seconds, someone needs blood, but only 3% of those who are eligible to donate give blood. So uh, we're going to ask that you please consider donating next week and signing up for a slot. I realize that means you might not be sitting here in the sanctuary, but that's fine because church can happen anywhere. And so you can take out your phone. If you have a, a Facebook, you can watch the live stream from the comfort of a donation chair in the power bus, uh, just, uh, just a few... You you know, yards away. So I hope that you'll consider doing that. And if you have friends, uh, maybe they, they are not interested in coming to church per se, but they'd be interested in helping to save lives, uh, then invite them to come to the parking lot and, uh, and to say hello to the folks from Vitalant in the power bus. And uh, you can invite them that way. So I thank you in advance for signing up. And again, you can do that by going to the home page of our church website, peacetree.church and clicking on the give blood uh, box that's right there. One more announcement just to share with you. It's hard to believe, but Ash Wednesday 
and the season of Lent are just around the corner. We're going to share more about our uh, pastor's Bible study that's going to be using this book right here from Adam Hamilton. Uh, we're going to be sharing more about that later in the service. But right now, I hope that you will mark your calendars for February 22nd's Ash Wednesday service. We're planning on starting the service at 6.30 p.m., and soon you'll be able to RSVP and invite your friends using a Facebook event. Uh, now, this midweek service helps to set the stage for Lent, and it helps us to consider our own mor mortality as we journey together towards Holy Week and towards the cross. So again, that Ash Wednesday service is going to be on the 22nd, and it's going to start at 6.30. So again, we thank you for joining us for worship online in person here at Peace Street. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Durbin to join me up here at the altar, uh, as well as the Smith family for this morning's baptism. sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present this morning for holy baptism, Caleb Christian Smith, Jr. Caleb and Jennifer, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And will you nurture Caleb in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life, if so say, I will. Peace tree, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, if so say, we do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care and let us use the words on the screen as our response. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. I'm going to invite Dr. Durbin to pour our baptismal water into the font. And as he does so, I pray, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. I'm going to get one more little drop of water. Y'all have seen me do this. You know there's nothing magic about it. We did it last week as uh, one of our young adults came to be baptized. Uh, but this is, don't let the water bottle fool you. Uh, this was just what I used to bring back water from the Jordan River. Uh, on my 2019 trip to Israel. So there's nothing magic about this water, um, but I pray that um, 
it brings you a sense of peace that uh, there's a few molecules uh, that are going to be used uh, to touch Caleb's head uh, that was used when John baptized uh, Jesus in the Jordan. Friends, I'm going to invite I'm, I'm going to invite Dr. Durbin to come stand here as well. And let's, if we can, we'll place a hand on um, on Caleb, and we're going to invite uh, friends and, and family, if you will, to extend your hands out as we say this this prayer over Caleb. Now, let us pray. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. We're going to use the words on the screen so that we may properly welcome him. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. And friends, let's lift up a hand clap to God for this joyous occasion. We thank the Smith family for joining us today. Congrats, Jennifer. All right, Caleb. All right, Junior. We'll see you, buddy. And friends, as they make their way back to their uh, seat, we're going to invite you to stand uh, as we sing. We just, we've just spread the baptismal font. Uh, now we're going to sing uh, a classic hymn that we have sung for hundreds of years in the church, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let's uh, stand and join our voices together now.
Miss our children to Peachtree Kids. Our children ages three through fifth grade may now attend Peachtree Kids. It's going to take place in room seven. Our our children's leaders are heading there right now, Miss Catherine, Miss Karen. Uh, parents, if you didn't get a chance to check in your kids and they'd like to go to Peachtree Kids, we just invite you to walk with them now. You can you can check them in at room seven at that door. And uh, parents, you'll be able to pick up your children from room seven after worship concludes. They're going to hang out there from now until the end of the service. So they're heading there now. And at this time, we're also going to take a moment to offer our gifts uh, back to God, our Ushers are walking around with the offering plates. But if you'd like to make a gift using your cell phone, then please visit peacetree.church slash give. You can click on the button that takes you to our Blackbaud page. You can also now donate using PayPal. And if you're writing a check, we ask that you please make it out to Peace Tree. If you're watching from home and you'd like to mail in your tithes and offerings, then please send those gifts to 9315 East Shelby Drive in Carrierville, Tennessee, 38017. Thank you all always for your generosity and your support of our ministries here at Peace Tree. Well, friends, mark your calendars for February 25th's Family Fun Night featuring Magic Mr. Nick. If you've ever been to the Botanical Gardens or to Zoo Boo or Zoo Lights, then you know who Magic Mr. Nick is. We're going to host a free event so that our neighbors can learn more about Peace Tree, come here and enjoy our facilities. You can visit the homepage of our website, peacetree.church, and you can click on the box that has uh, this graphic, Magic Mr. Nick, and get your tickets right now. Claim those. Uh, this this is going to be a super fun night for all of our families and our friends and neighbors. So invite others to join us. You can use the Facebook event that we've created. You can send them to the church website where they can claim their Eventbrite tickets using the link on the homepage. And again, this February 25th event is totally free. It's just giving us an opportunity to meet new neighbors, introduce them to Peace Tree, uh, to tell them about uh, our Spring Fest and Easter activities that are coming up, to tell them about Day Shore Day Camp that's going to be taking place in June. Uh, so we're looking forward to that and having a chance to meet those families. Now, will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. Use these gifts that we return to you and use our hands and our feet to meet the needs of the church and the needs of the world. Bless these tithes and offerings, we pray, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'm going to say a quick hello to some folks that I saw uh, online as I bring that up. Uh, my brother's joining us from South Carolina this morning. Hello to Christian. Hello to uh, Ruth Walters, uh, Joe and uh, Lisa Lopez. And if uh, if you're not friends with Joe or Lisa on Facebook, then you might not have seen the praise report. But she does have a, a bone marrow transplant donor. So uh, amen and a hallelujah for that, uh, church. Uh, so they're going to be heading to Nashville on Monday for a round of tests. Uh, they'll be back at the end of next week, and then we'll, we'll fill you in on uh, their lengthy stay. We're sure it's going to be several months, or they're going to be at the Sarah Cannon Cancer Center in Nashville. Um, but Joe and Lisa, we're so glad that you've been able to worship with us online, and uh, thankful for this live stream that we have. Uh, Dina and Gary Dotson are worshiping with us this morning. Janet Autry, Jean Gates, uh, Regina McWhorter, McWhorter, who says she's wearing red and gold today, so I guess she's rooting for the Chiefs. Uh, we've got... Uh Let's see. I'm seeing Bonnie Gay, Charlotte Ernesti, and uh, and several others that uh, that I, I can see you're logged in, but I, I can't see every single person. It just says we we got folks with us online, so that's a great thing. Um, so thank you all for joining us online, and thank you uh, those of you who are in here. I, uh, I I will say I'm seeing red. I'm seeing some green as well. I saw some Packers jerseys. I saw a 901 FC jersey, and uh, and and Paul, what what uh, what 
football jersey do you have on today? Oh, Liverpool? Uh, well, you know, I like, I, I like Liverpool for the Beatles. I do like Liverpool for the Beatles. I don't know much about their football club, so there, there we go. Um, so uh, I hope that everybody enjoys uh, their Super Bowl Sunday today. And again, thanks for bringing in those canned goods and making those donations online. So Dr. Durbin's going to bring us the word uh, today. I'm going to go ahead and grab his, uh, his stand here. And uh, I believe he's going to share a little bit about these books that you can kind of see on the stool. Uh, but but before he tells you more about that, let me tell you about um, our next book club novel that we're reading, The Other Einstein. It's from beloved New York Times bestselling author Marie Benedict, uh, and it, she brings us the story of the not-so-famous scientist who not only loved Albert Einstein, but also shaped the theories that brought him lasting renown. We have 10 copies of this book. I feel like I've already seen four or so that have been picked up in, at the welcome desk in the North Lobby. Uh, all you have to do is uh, pick up a book let us know which copy of the book you uh, you have taken, and then you can join us at the, the home of Stephen Laurie Jones on March the 7th, uh, where our next book club is going to take place. That's a Tuesday night. We have a Facebook event that you can use to RSVP. We also have an online uh, group on Facebook that just says Peace Street Book Club, uh, about 80 members that are a part of that, that give their latest suggestions, uh, offer to host, and it's an opportunity for us, again, to meet friends who might be members of other churches uh, who maybe don't have a church home, and uh, just gives us a chance to talk about books that we love to read. And so The Other Einstein is coming up on March the 7th, and you can pick up a free copy of the book that we got from our friends at the Carville Birch Library. Uh, but at this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Durbin to come up, uh, bring us the word, and also maybe tell us a little bit about uh, this Bible study that he's going to be picking up, uh, I believe, on February the 23rd. It should be the day, the day after Ash Wednesday is when uh, we start that, correct? Okay. Good morning again. Adam Hamilton, the Creed. It's going to be our study guide. And this starts the morning after Ash Wednesday, Thursday, February 23rd, 10.30 in the conference room. We hope we overflow that, and then we'll move to a different room if we need to. So I have books here after the service. If you'd like a book, you come get a book, and we'll make sure we have one here for you. So we have at least five copies here, and I can get other copies as we need them. So I'm counting on you. So... We had about, I think, 10 or 12 study participants last time, maybe more this time. And the first chapter is a good chapter. It's on a subject you might want to know more about. It's not a complicated subject. It's a three-word or three-sentence, three-word God. You want to know more about God? Anybody? Okay. God. I want you to pray with me as we gather this morning. Eternal God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift sent from above. That we have this wonderful privilege to come down to the water, to be baptized. That we have this joyful privilege to study and to learn to pray, to be washed again, to know that we can know the joy of being in your presence. And as we think about your word, teach us again that we might learn anew from you and that we might be drawn closer to you so that we might have a walk that's a fresh, new way of thinking about our journey with you. In the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Amen and amen. This is the phrase today. I want you to frame this in your own mind and heart. You give them something to eat. Imagine Jesus tired after ministering to and healing the crowds, teaching them, He's just come from an experience of learning of the death of his cousin and good friend, John the Baptist. He is grieving. He is tired. He is living with his sadness. 
He is living with the press of the crowds coming upon him. He is living with the fact that many, not only among his disciples, but those that are followers, are needing many things. Among those things that they need are food, they need rest, they need someone who would guide them and bless them and help them and encourage them. And in the middle of all of these needs, the disciples are anxious perhaps to send those who are in need away and they want to say, go and let these people be cared for in other places. Jesus, send them away and imagine a steely-eyed Jesus looking at you, looking at me and saying to you as a disciple this phrase, you, you, not someone else, you give them something to eat. Let that sink in. How many times in our journeys of life have we decided that someone else might do what might be expected of us? That we might want someone else to take on the task that's been assigned to us? That we might want someone else to take on the chore that might be ours? that we might want someone else to handle the ministry that's been given to us, that we might want someone else to care for the person that walks in front of us. But Jesus, perhaps steely-eyed as he faces us, says, you do something for them. But no, we don't have enough bread, do we? We don't have enough time, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough energy, we don't have enough willingness, or we don't have enough ability or faith or love or compassion or whatever. Or sometimes we're just simply skeptical, or not even this one, we're too pessimistic. We're too preoccupied, we're too distracted, we're too lazy, we're too uninspired, too selfish. Too insecure, too unconvinced, just like those disciples were that day. Go! Go away. Go away. Another day we will help you. This day we cannot. A lot of the time, if you are like me, or if you are like them, you are ready for someone else to do it. I want you to hear the story and I want you to join the story in Mark 6. It starts with verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and all they had no leisure even to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them coming and going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things, and when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place. The hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, this is that line, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? He said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they said they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. He divided the two fish among them all. And all laid in were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and other fish. 
And those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a wonderful story that I think was first told perhaps by Booker Washington. There was a ship lost at sea along the northern coast of South America. And they sighted a, a friendly vessel and the, when the mast of this vessel, there was a signal that went out, water, water, we die of thirst. They had lost their source of water. The answer from the friendly vessel came back at once, and you can imagine this signal. Cast down your bucket where you are. A second time, the signal, water, water, send us water from the distressed vessel. Answered again, cast down your bucket where you are. A third and fourth signal for water was again answered, cast down your bucket where you are. The captain of the distressed vessel at last, heeding the injunction, cast down his bucket. It came up full of fresh, sparkling water from the mouth of the Amazon River, which extends miles out into the ocean in what is called the River Sea. In this story, a full of, ship full of people had an urgent need for fresh water, and it was closer at hand than they knew. Our text this week overflows with these tremendous needs. There's a need for rest. The apostles need rest. They are worn out with the demands of their lives, and these followers of Jesus are very tired. They're very tired. And there's a need for leadership. There are sheep out there who need a shepherd. The crowd needs a teacher, and that is the one Jesus that we look to when we are tired. There's a need for food. Everyone is hungry, but where will the food come from, and how will the needs be met? So there's a need for rest, there's a need for leadership, there's a need for a shepherd, there's a need for food. This is much like life itself. We have all these huge needs in our world. We wonder how can we meet the needs and how can those who need a shepherd find the shepherd and how can those who need the needs of the world, how can those needs be met? So we get discouraged. We give up. We wonder how can, in the middle of all these life situations, how can we ever respond? And so we are like the disciples of that day. We tend to find ourselves saying, just go away. Just go away. Give up. Give up for another day. But Jesus keeps coming back to us. And he keeps saying, church, church, will you do something? Will you take whatever resources you have, will you take whatever I have entrusted to you, and will you do your best to meet these needs? We tend to give up too quickly. This is the way I see the church in today's culture. We keep looking for ways to push people out instead of welcome people in. We keep looking for ways to say we cannot meet your needs instead of ways to stretch ourselves to see how we can meet their needs. There are many people who are sick and needy. That day on the hillside, people were hungry. They were needing to follow this teacher, this great shepherd. But the disciples themselves who were on the inside were wanting to push them away. We are today's church. This church has to be a welcoming environment. This church has to be an environment that says people who are needy must be able to come. The people who are needy must be able to be say, we are welcoming you. We must say we are able to meet your needs and to take our resources and share them. Don't pretend that we don't have the skills or the resources to do God's bidding in the world. We may not have all that we need, but God will enable us to have enough to do what we need to do. How do great things happen? It does not happen because we do great things. It happens because we have enough faith that God does great things. 
when I hear about the stories of things that happen in church, when some feeding program happens, when someone starts a literacy program, when someone starts a program to help children after school, when someone starts a missions program to help poor children in the inner city, when any of those things happen, someone has a dream and a hope of helping someone in need. It's not because they have too much or too many resources, it's because they finally trust those resources to God. Do you have a neighbor who's having a hard time? Do you have a coworker who needs a friend to listen? Do you have someone who's lonely who needs to know that they are worthwhile? Do you have some child who needs to know that they are valued and not to be bullied? Our value is in treating people well and treating people as if they are loved. Here's one for you. If you don't get anything else, get this one. A missionary of another generation, J. Hudson Taylor, he always offered this to everyone who would, dis who would get discouraged about whether or not the, something could be accomplished, like, like feeding the people that day. Three-word motto, impossible, difficult, done. So if something's impossible, oh yeah. Something difficult, oh yeah. Can it get done? Oh yeah. That's God. That's not us. That's not our work. That's not work that we can accomplish. But when we take our resources and give them to God and yield them to God, then that's what can happen. To fully trust God is to say, take what you have. Let me see what you have this morning. What if I had you empty your pockets? I mean, if I could get it all. I know most people don't carry anything anymore. Probably yield about one credit card and two dollars maybe three but what if I could get it all oh I don't mean I could get it all I mean if God could get it all what if I could get everything in here and God could multiply it what could happen something good, something big, something impossible, something difficult, something could get done. I like to think about God like that. That God could take something that we are not aware of He could take those pieces of crust that we've got stuffed in our pockets. Anybody here ever watch it? Everybody loves Raymond. Remember where he goes to that reception? Uh, I think it's some kind of PTA reception where his wife's been elected as president or vice president of the board. And he wants to take home some roast beef and he puts it in his pocket. She's so embarrassed. But he really likes roast beef. But I was thinking about if we took those crumbs that are in our pockets and offered them to God, what great things might happen. There's a 1970 song. Big Yellow Taxi, Joni Mitchell. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Sometimes we underestimate others' value and contributions 
only to realize them after the fact. We consign elderly relatives to the has-been been, not realizing the rich resources of wisdom their stories can yield for us and ours. We dismiss our current circumstances thinking the grass will always be greener in another place, another job, another relationship, or another church. We underestimate our gifts and ourselves, but what if within the confines of our situations, within the gifts and abilities of people around us, within our own life stories and buried family heritage, there are riches and resources untapped and yet unknown. Cast down your buckets. Right here. Right here. Cast down your buckets. You got some real stuff here. In looking material for the sermon this week, I came across something that was striking to me. That passage where it says, two or, when two or three are gathered together, I am with you. Carl Barth said that that was not just about when people are praying or worshiping or in church. He said that's everywhere. Like when the thieves were on the cross, there. People out on the street, there. People in the bar, there. People talking about Jesus somewhere just walking down the street, there. Wherever it is where people are hungry, looking for Jesus, looking for hope, looking for a way out, looking for a way home, looking for food. Jesus, two or three talking, there. So that's the way it is. And what God has said is that when people are looking for stuff and need feeding, He looks you in the eye and he looks me in the eye. And if they need something, remember, he's, he's steely-eyed. He looks you in the eye and he says, you, don't look over there somewhere else. You, 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 you. You give them something to eat. What about it? Would you empty your pockets to make the miracle happen? It's a simple enough question. Would you empty your pockets? So God will enable the miracle to happen. In obedience to his command to you and to me, you give them something to eat. Let's bow for prayer. Holy God, we confess that we have heard your charge and we have ignored it. We have left the feeding to other people. We thought you were talking to somebody else when you said you give them something to eat. But this morning we recognized that maybe you were talking to us. 
So maybe there's something we can do, some difference we can make, and we want to open our hearts to that. We want to place our yes alongside your invitation that we might say we'll offer what we have, the resources that are ours, to make the miracles happen. In your name we pray. Amen. We got a song? As we have this closing hymn, I hope you'll offer your heart anew to God and think about this opportunity to say yes again anew in faith. What is our song, Josh? Uh, this song is just called Who. Who? Mm -hmm. That sounds like the right one. <laughs> Let's stand together.
Amen. Josh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your witness. It touched our hearts. Have a wonderful rest of Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you for your presence today. What a joy it was for the baptism. And that has lifted our hearts and made our spirits soar. We ask that you be at peace today. Know that the joy of Christ lives in your hearts. May it be a day of peace and joy as you celebrate the rest of the day. Go in God's good peace. Amen and amen.